use a vector line integral to calculate the circulation of the vector field F around the closed curve C. And here we are given the vector field defined by the components negative x, negative y, i hat, plus x plus y, j hat. And our closed curve C is the counterclockwise path around the circle of radius 8 centered at the point 1, 1. So let's think real quick. What are we asked to find here? We want to compute our circulation using a vector line integral. So we know that's the integral over our closed curve C of the vector field F dotted with the tangent vector with respect to the arc length. And we know that we can convert this to the integral over the closed curve C of the vector field. And this is going to be the parametrized vector field in terms of our parametric representation of C. And we dot this with the tangent vector with respect to t, dt. So this is the formula that we're going to need to use here to compute the circulation. So in order to do this, the very first thing that we need to do is parameterize our curve. So we need that one parameter description of this closed curve C. So let's note here, again, C is the counterclockwise path around the circle of radius 8 at the center point 1, 1. So let's define this in our Cartesian coordinates. We know that we have a circle, radius 8, with a center point of 1, 1. So this will be x minus 1 squared plus y minus 1 squared is equal to 8 squared, or 64. And so we'll simply just rewrite this as equal to 64. And so we need that parametric description. So we can recall, let me use blue here. Let's recall that for a circle centered at some arbitrary point x naught, y naught, that the parametric descriptions for a counterclockwise orientation of this circle is going to have the parametrized component x of t equal to x naught, so that's the x coordinate of the center point, plus the radius times cosine of t. Similarly, we have the parametric representation of y in terms of the arbitrary parameter t, and this is equal to y naught, where y naught is the y coordinate of the center point, plus the radius times sine of t. And this, of course, is such that t is greater than or equal to 0, less than or equal to 2 pi. So this is the general parametric representation of a circle centered at the point x naught y naught with a radius of r. And we're going to use this to now find the parametric representation for our given circle here. So we have the one parameter description vector r of t is going to be equal to the vector with components x of t, y of t. And let's actually go ahead and we'll give ourselves a little bit more room here. Still want to be able to see that function. So since our center point is at 1, 1, we know that the x coordinate will be 1 plus the radius, which is 8, times cosine of t. And the y coordinate is going to be 1 plus 8 times sine of t. And we have the same bounds. This is going to be where, since t is the closed curve in a counterclockwise direction, t is greater than or equal to 0, less than or equal to 2 pi. So we are going to use this one parameter description of our curve to parameterize both the function that's given and to find our tangent vector. So while we have this here, let's find our tangent vector. Let's take the derivative. So we have r prime of t is going to be equal to, the 1 goes to 0, so I have minus 8 multiplied by sine of t, and then the y-coordinate will differentiate to 8 multiplied by cosine of t. And notice here that we have a scalar multiple of 8, so might as well pull that out to simplify our computation later. So we have 8 
multiplied by minus sine of t, cosine of t. So now that we have the parametric description and the tangent vector, it's time to parameterize our given function. So I'll give us more room. Once we write this function down, we are given the, and I keep saying function, it's the vector field. We are given the vector field here in terms of x and y, which is the vector defined by the components minus x plus y, and then we have positive x plus y. And we need to parameterize this now using our parametric description. So we parameterize f Our vector field. So we now have the vector field which will be defined in terms of the parametric description of x in terms of t and y in terms of t. And so making sure we have enough room, we can rewrite this as minus, we have plugging in those components here that we just found. This is going to be 1 plus 8 cosine of t for x plus 1 plus 8 times sine of t for y. So there's the x of t. And then our y component is x plus y. So this becomes we have 1 plus cosine of t plus 1 plus sine of t and we can simplify, thank goodness. So this will become, let's see, we have the vector minus, so we have those two constants that we can combine. I have two plus eight cosine of t plus eight sine of t. And we have the same thing for our y component. So let's do this. So we'll copy this component here and now again, notice here, you don't have to do this, but just because we have a lot of computations left, I'm noticing that each component of this vector has a greatest common factor of two. So let's pull that out in front. So this will be two multiplied by the vector minus one plus four cosine of t plus four sine of t. And then we have that same thing for the y component, 1 plus 4 cosine of t plus 4 sine of t. Okie dokie. So we are ready now to set up the integrand of our vector line integral for the circulation. And to do that, we are going to now need to take the dot product of this tangent vector the derivative of our parametric description of our curve with the parametrized vector field. So here we go. So we want to take the dot product and I'll abbreviate dp for the dot product and this is of our parametrized vector field and we are dotting this with the tangent vector. And I'm going to write this right below simply because we have two big vectors to multiply. So it can actually go right ahead, right off the bat. Notice in the tangent vector you have that scalar multiple of 8, and in the parametrized vector field we have that scalar multiple of 2. So we have 2 times 8 gives us 16 out in front, and now we are dotting together the vector field negative 1 plus 4 cosine of t plus 4 sine of t. And then our y component is that 1 plus 4 cosine of t plus 4 sine of t. And we are dotting this with that tangent vector, which is minus sine of t cosine of t. And so we'll give ourselves plenty of room here. 
And while this seems intimidating at first, it's just a little algebra, so we'll take our time as we go through. So this is going to be equal to 16 multiplied by, so by the definition of the dot product, we are going to multiply together the x components. So notice that our two x components here both have a negative, so this will become positive sine of t multiplied by 1 plus 4 cosine of t plus 4 sine of t plus, and now we're going to multiply those y components together. And so very similarly, we have plus cosine of t multiplied by 1 plus 4 cosine of t, 4 sine of t. And now we are distributing and simplifying. So we'll distribute this sine of t through to each term. And we'll do the same thing, going ahead and distributing this cosine of t through to each term in the second part. And so this leaves us with, we have 16 multiplied by sine of t plus 4 cosine of t sine of t plus 4 sine of t squared and then we have plus cosine of t plus 4 cosine of t squared plus 4 sine of t cosine of t and look at all this nice simplification that we have. We can combine, we have two like terms here, we have four cos of t, four, or excuse me, four cosine of t times sine of t, four cosine of t times sine of t, and we also can see Pythagorean's identity coming in here. So, we can rewrite this as 16, and I'll pull those single terms to the front. We have 16 multiplied by sine of t plus cosine of t, then we have plus 8 sine of t, cosine of t. And then to get Pythagorean's identity, we can think about this as 4 multiplied by sine of t squared plus cosine of t squared. So I factored that greatest common factor of 4 out. And so there is Pythagorean's identity, which we know is equal to 1. And we also can see here that we have a double angle formula. Woohoo! So we have a double angle. We can rewrite this as 4 multiplied by 2 sine of t, cosine of t. And now we can rewrite this as 4 times sine of 2t. So this simplifies to 16 multiplied by sine of t plus cosine of t, and applying that double angle formula, this becomes plus 4 times sine of 2t, plus the Pythagorean's identity portion simply goes to 4. So look at this, how lovely is this? It's, it took a little bit of computation, but now we're ready to integrate, and each piece of this integrand is going to be just a general antiderivative. Woohoo! So let's set up our circulation integral and evaluate. So we are ready to set up that vector line integral for circulation and evaluate it. So again, we know that our circulation is equal to the vector line integral over our closed curve C of the parametrized vector field dotted with the tangent vector with respect to t, dt, and plugging everything in. This is now going to be the integral over the closed curve from 0 to 2 pi, and then plugging in that dot product we just found. I'm actually going to keep that 16 on the outside. So our integrand here is simply sine of t plus cosine of t plus 4 sine of 2t plus 4 dt. And we can go right ahead and integrate here. So this is equal to 
16 multiplied by the antiderivative, we have minus cosine of t plus sine of t, and this will become minus 2 cosine of 2t, and then you have plus 4t from 0 to 2 pi. And we're ready to evaluate. So this is 16, and we're plugging in 2 pi here, so this will be 16 minus cosine of 2 pi plus sine of 2 pi minus 2 times cosine of 2 pi times 2, which gives us 4 pi plus 8 pi. And now we're subtracting when we evaluate at 0. So we have minus cosine of 0. We'll need a little bit more room. So we have cosine of 0 plus sine of 0 minus 2 cosine of 0 plus 0. And look at all this nice simplification here. We know cosine of 2 pi will go to 1. Sine of 2 pi goes to 0. Cosine of 4 pi goes to 1. Cosine of 0 goes to 1. Cosine of sine goes to 0. Cosine of 0 goes to 1, which leaves us with, we have 16 multiplied by a negative 1 minus 2 plus 8 pi. And then we have minus 1, or excuse me, negative 1 minus 2. And if we distribute that negative through, we see all of these terms are going to cancel, except 8 pi. So this is 16 multiplied by negative, well, we could say negative 3 plus 8 pi plus 3. So these 3s will cancel each other right out, pew, pew, leaving us with 16 times 8 pi for a beautiful final answer of 128 pi. Woohoo!